Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Harry, and yeah, um, our excavations at Cat's Brain are happening just over there. So, if it's all right, I'll uh, I'll walk you over. Great. So yeah. So we're just walking into the main excavation here at uh, Cat's Brain, not too far from Marden, where another dig's going on, and they found remains of a very ploughed out long barrow which potentially dates to 3600 to 3700 BC which makes it one of the oldest in the country and is actually contemporary exactly with Nap of Hawa on the um, Papa Westray in the Orkneys. Yeah. Um, so. Good afternoon everyone uh, this is the 2017 trench um, just opened up at uh, Cat's Brain um, so this is what we use normally describe as a Neolithic mortuary enclosure. Um, so what we mean by that is that this was um, a ba basically a cemetery for the dead in the, in the Neolithic period. So we're talking around about three and a half thousand years ago, um, three and a half thousand BC, sorry, um, that this was being used for. So um, by that provisional date, we know it's sort of in the middle to early Neolithic period. So um, it very much um, is, it's not contemporary with modern Henge, it's um, about a thousand years earlier, but um, at the same time it shows you how expansive prehistory is and how inclusive it can be. Um, so yeah, we've got, um, I'll pass this photo around because it's um, quite useful to see the main features. Um, you've basically got a darker external ditch running in a U-shape across um, the western axis here and going towards the east and tailing off. Um, and we know that's a ditch because of this very distinctive um, cut where the material is sub subsequently be deposited. And then the interpretation is, because all of this chalky soil is natural, um, what we think is that um, this was dug out and then placed on top of the on top of the Long Barrow Monument um, to form to form it before it was destroyed. Um, and the inner monument is unique because it's of its trapezoidal shape. Uh, so it tapers out towards towards us, so towards the east, and it has a and it has a, oh, an east-west alignment, which correlates to sort of other long barrows in the area, such as West Kennet and uh, all the all the long barrows you know. And um, yeah, uh, sort of one of our main discoveries here has been uh, post holes running across. So. Um, what, what people are digging up here along sort of the right hand side and the left hand side here are uh, what we interpret to be post holes. So um, basically um, what we, how we know this is because of mainly the size and the fact that they run across. So what we think was they mainly probably wouldn't have supported stone like an Avery or Stonehenge or anything like that, but they would have supported probably something less permanent like wood um, to form sort of the structure of the long barrow or just for ceremonial purposes. Um, and another thing to point out is sort of the trapezoidal shape is quite unique um, because long barrows are very sort of popular in the Neolithic, they're widely distributed across, especially across southern England. Uh, but this shape is unique and um, Jim Leary, actually our head archaeologist who's been working here, says that it vaguely compares to um, a site called Fossils Lodge near Salisbury um, because um, there they found um, these, um, they found all the features and they found three excavated pits um, full of disarticulated human bone. Um, and we estimate from those pits alone that there would have been around 53 to 57 individuals buried there. So what that says is really, it's more of a guide to us really, to what we could potentially find here, um, rather than ne what necessarily reflects reality at the moment, because it is quite an early stage in the excavation. Um, so you, yeah, we're quite well situated here um, in the landscape. We've got um, Adam's grave um, just over there. You can see by the white horse, it's a very distinct sort of pimple on the hill. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a long barrow as well, um, and then there's West Kennet further, further to the south, as well as Avery and Stonehenge um, either side of us. So yeah, we're very, situated very well here, also to the, the water course of the Avon to the south, um, very much can cement the idea that these, this landscape was interconnected and used by the populations here um, about 5,000 years ago. 
Um, in terms of fines, uh, we've had um, a large amount of worked flint. Uh, we've had um, we've had a lot of bone, uh, sort of bone fragments. So we haven't been able to identify which species they belong to. But at the same time, the concentration of that bone indicates to us that you know it may have been feces if it was an animal, or, or you know cremation or burial if it was human. Um, so one of the main in indicators we found there is sort of we've, we're uncovering a burnt layer along the ditch um, which has been deposited and obviously any, any kind of burning in this context means that um, there was human activity going on. So charcoal is a very good sign for an archaeologist. And what we found here is um, sort of a lot of burnt fragments of pottery and bone uh, which we know sort of date from the prehistoric period because the quality of the pottery is the fabric is very soft and um, it hasn't been fired at a very high temperature because they couldn't get the temperature that high. So that's how we know, really, just due to typology rather than absolute radiocarbon dating that this site was this old. So we're just here at the dig at Cat's Brain. We've just been given some information about it. It's a fascinating place um, because it sits in between Stonehenge and Avebury. Not exactly, but fairly close to it. Um, it's the same style as Fussell's Lodge, which is a, a, a long barrow found near uh, in, near Salisbury, near Salisbury Plain rather. I'm going to get some aerial shots and take a look from above. Uh, and it's only been going on a month or so, this dig, and then they're going to finish it completely and cover it back up. But it just shows you an indication of the age here, which is 3600 to 3700 BC. Contemporary or a little bit earlier even than West Kennet and other sites. Obviously not as old as the post holes that go back 8000 BC near Stonehenge, but very much contemporary with the Nap of Hower and some of the sites on Orkney and the Ness of Brodgar even. So if there's a connection, I'd be very interested to look into that more. So I'm here with ancient symbology expert JJ Ainsworth. And what's your take on the site, JJ? Well, I think it's interesting. I don't think they found much. I don't think they will find much. But the trapezoidal shape intrigues me because it reminds me sort of of a unopened bellus snap just going straight across and the same kind of things were found in Ireland but they're more like court tombs but the shape is similar small at one end uh, widening at the other So I'm just here with Jim Leary, who's um, the head archaeologist at the Marden Dig and uh, and the Cat's Brain Dig as well. That's right. And uh, I was going to ask him a couple of questions about what's going on here. So um, what, what are you looking for here at Marden? Because we're inside the main henge, correct? We're inside the main henge here. So uh, this is this is the third and final year of a three-year project, and um, it's focused largely on Marden Henge but also the Wilsford Henge and the, the original concept of the project was to look at the Vale of Pusey to try and um, you know I became really this sort of this came 10 years ago back in 2007 when I was working at Silbury and I started to realize that um, uh, th there was a lot of work going on up in the Avery area, my work, uh, Josh Pollard's work at Avery, um, a lot of work going on at Stonehenge as well, Mike Parker Pearson's Riverside project and so on. Uh, there was all this work going on in the, in the World Heritage Sites up on the Chalkland, nothing in between. And the Vale of Pusey almost entirely missed out um, and you know a few conversations with my good friend and colleague Dave Field and we conceived the project, the Vale of we conceive the Vale of Pusey project and the idea is to fill this gap which was uh, you know largely an unknown between the two famous monuments um, give those monuments context but also show how important this area would have been so what's been found so far at, at Marden this particular area uh, you're working yeah. on uh, Mar what we've, you know, what we've been discovering at Marden is that Marden's a relatively long-lived monument. There are a number of phases. So we've, um, uh, we, we, we now realise that at the um, earliest phase in the later Neolithic period, is a very large settlement, a very widespread settlement. Everywhere we excavate, there is evidence for buildings, um, and these largely sit underneath all of the earthwork. So I think in the first instance, in the late Neolithic period, this is a settlement, and then something happens um, 
what we don't know um, the, the settlement is abandoned it's effectively raised to the ground and very rapidly and I think it is quite rapidly the henge is constructed and then a number of um, features within the henge are constructed so the inner henge and then the Hatfield Barrow so I think that's the main the main discovery is that this underlying Mardenhenge is an earlier large um, late Neolithic settlement and this is you know, it's, it's replicated at Durrington Wall, so it's clearly more common than we previously thought. You mentioned the Hatfield Barrow, that was a huge barrow before it was pretty much level. Can you give us a little bit of info about that? Yeah, so the Hatfield Barrow, the earliest antiquarians talk about it being 15 metres high. Um, it was excavated into in 1807 by Richard Colt Hoare and William Cunnington, those famous antiquarians. They uh, were able to show that the, the mound itself wasn't constructed over a, a burial, which it was initially thought to be. Um, uh, but actually, it, if we now know it fits into a monument type known as mo um, monumental mounds, like Silbury Hill, like the Marlborough Mound, and so on. Um, anyway, their work destabilised it, the mound partially collapsed, and then a few years later it was entirely levelled, presumably by the farmer. This is prime farmland, this is prime agricultural land, very, very fertile. So um, you know, it, it, it was in it was in the way, so to speak, and it just makes you wonder how many times that's happened up and down the vale. And with the, the cat's brain, brilliant name by the way, uh, the cat's brain dig yeah. with the, the potential long barrow there. Um, I've just been over there, had a quick look at it, but they haven't found any bones or anything. So what what is the sort of purpose of really looking at that? If there, if, if is it really a long barrow with no bones? Well, it's in in form. It's definitely a long barrow. But how these long barrows work is, you know, um, what what we're really looking at and. Um, you know, so, so some some suggest that maybe the, the, the human remains would have been stored above the ground. Um, we, you know, of course, the cat's brain long bear has been entirely plough levelled. Um, uh, Fussell's Lodge, there, there were some human remains. I mean, that was a much better preserved monument, but there were, there, there were human remains dug into pits. So, you know, there's a chance that we might get some pits with human remains in. But, you know, really, these monuments don't get excavated very often. The last full excavation in Wiltshire of a long barrow of that type of monument, um, however you want to interpret it, was in the early 60s so you know we, d we don't know we're floundering around uh, trying to work out what these monuments for so that's why we're excavating it it's not just about getting getting human remains it's about understanding what it was for how it was constructed how it was used you know some suggestion that these trapezoid buildings and that's effectively what we're looking at as a the footprint of a trapezoidal building um, was was had an original life as an actual building was lived in well that's something that you know that's a discussion that we can add into we can you know we we, we, we can feed into these really broad discussions so um, you know it, w whether we get human remains or not doesn't matter I mean the, re the reason the, you know the reason we're digging it is because that monument is going it's been plowed away year on year um, and so let's grab the information whilst we can understood, understood. And um, in the wider context, I mean, I've looked at all the newspaper reports. They say, uh, it, you know, the cat's uh, brain was, you know, the, the burial of the Stonehenge builders. Is there any? Have you found any connections with Stonehenge or even with Avebury? No, I mean, we're in the, we're in the landscape between Avebury and Stonehenge, and the whole purpose of this project is to fill that gap. Um, so, you know, we're in the broader landscape. The people who were buried, if anyone was buried there, the people who who built that monument use that monument perhaps were buried in that monument are part of the flux of the world around this amazing landscape but there's no way that we can say that they were the builders of Stonehenge um, just because simply we don't know who the builders of Stonehenge were so um, you know but, it, but, but is that, I mean that's kind of the, 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 the catchy press headline isn't it I mean the key thing is is that we are excavating a rare type of monument for the first time with you know modern techniques modern technologies and we can feed into broader discussions and um, hopefully have something important to say at the end of it okay thank you very much Jim Leary thank you